Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining our webinar this evening. My name is Caitlin Irvin, and I'm here at Regent University, and we're just so happy to have you and to be able to share some information about some of our master's programs that we offer within our School of Education. Uh, so before we get started and dive into the material, I wanted to go over a few housekeeping items. Uh, first of all, if you are new to the Zoom webinar platform, I wanted to draw your attention to both the Q&A feature and the chat feature. Um, the Q&A feature is where I highly encourage you, if you have any questions at any point uh, during this webinar, go ahead and type those into the Q&A box, and we will um, have a live Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Um, and we can also type answers if it's a more personal question as well. Um, and uh, in the chat feature, um, feel free to practice using that now and let us know where you're tuning in from. I'd love to see where you all are at the moment. Um, we will also be inserting some links to some of the information that is shared this evening there as well. Um, so feel free to keep um, looking at that throughout the webinar for some helpful information and resources for you. Tonight, we are joined by two of our um, esteemed professors in the School of Education, Dr. Mervyn Whiting and Dr. Jeff Pittman. And I briefly want to introduce them. Dr. Mervyn Whiting, is, he chairs our Career Switcher Program, which we're going to be learning about tonight. Um, he's also been a project director for a Federal Transition to Teaching Grant Program. He currently teaches Foundations in Education for Transition Professionals, Exploring the Curriculum, Classroom Management for Transitioning Teachers, and Professional Projects. So he's going to, he's a wealth of knowledge about our Career Switcher Program. And then Dr. Jeff Pittman uh, has just reached uh, 35 years here at Regent. He has served in several different roles, um, including School of Education and our, our School of Divinity. He also serves um, in a few different education-centered organizations, including the Southern Association of College Student Affairs, and he contributes to several publications, including the Leadership Exchange. So we're very excited to have them both with us this evening. Uh, before I hand the baton off to them, I wanted to touch a little bit on who we are as a university. Uh, so here at Regent University, we uh, strive to live up to our motto, which is Christian leadership to change the world. And so here we are very concerned and motivated to help you become a leader in your field, especially within the field of education where Christian leaders are very needed. So everything that we do both in and out of the classroom is gonna be centered around our three core values, which are excellence, innovation, and integrity. And something else that really sets Regent apart from other universities is that we work to um, really explore the relationship between faith and reason and how those two combined uh, make for a very powerful combination. I'll also mention that because of our huge online um, platform and all of the online courses that we offer, um, that really gives you the option to have a lot of flexibility uh, as you're seeking more further education. We try to make that very accessible to you. Um, we're also in the top 5% of most affordable Christian universities in the country. Uh, we strive to deliver high quality education. So even though you're receiving an affordable education, we do not sacrifice on quality or the standards that we seek to meet. And as again, as I mentioned before, Christ-centered education is really at the core of what we are about. Uh, so without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Dr. Mervyn Whiting to talk about the Career Switcher Program. 
Good evening. So welcome to this webinar. And what I will not do is bore you with details that you can obtain from our website. So if you haven't visited it yet, go to the School of Education within Regent, and then navigate to Career Switcher, and you'll see all the details. That's particularly important because the details are um, listing all the prerequisites that you might need to get into the program um, at the beginning, from the outset is what I mean. So in a nutshell, the Switcher program is probably the quickest and easiest and least um, uh, complicated way of getting a teaching license in Virginia. And the basic requirements are that you have got a bachelor's degree and that you have got at least three years work experience under your belt. The, um, the work experience that you might have had can be varied. Also, it can be accumulated. So if you did some work while you were an undergrad student, you can count that um, for, during your vacations or whatever. And if you've done two or three different jobs, you can pull those years together to, um, to make the three years total. So it's fairly flexible. Similarly, the bachelor's degree that you might have um, does not necessarily have to be the subject that you want to teach. But what uh, is important is to bear in mind the subject that you want to teach, you have to have a passion for, because children can see through anybody who is teaching them a subject that they're not really um, uh, ingrained in, that they're not really teaching from their heart. So you've got to have a passion for that subject. And uh, I'm sure you, you know what subject you would be best at teaching. So as you can see on the screen, there are six entry points throughout the year to make it convenient for you to join. And um, the bottom line in there on the bottom bullet rather is very important. If you join in May, for example, you can end up with your provisional teaching license as soon as July. Very concentrated. You have to give up your life for those three months, metaphorically speaking, but it's well worth it because then you're straight into a teaching job in August. And one year later, you'll have finished your first year of teaching and you'll have your uh, full uh, renewable, 10 year renewable license uh, by that time. So, very swift, um, hard work, but uh, you're working with people who are doing the same career change and uh, they will all be supporting you, as indeed will um, uh, my team and I in the School of Education. Uh, next slide, please. So when you join the program and you've been accepted into Regent and you start uh, working with us, everything is online, totally online. Um, this last year has been slightly different because of the uh, pandemic. Um, normally we would have uh, in-person meetings on uh, the campus where you would all come together from wherever you are in Virginia for a Saturday workshop. Uh, normally once a semester, sometimes twice, but uh, because of the plague, uh, everything is totally online now. And we do our, our in-person meetings, well, virtually, so not really in person, they're virtual meetings. And um, the, the beauty of online learning, if you have never done it before, is that you can choose the times that you do the studying. We provide you with everything you need, and you then select what is good for you in terms of your learning environment. So you could be doing the studying at two o'clock in the morning in your pajamas. I would be very, very happy if that works for you. So it's your choice. And we just provide everything you need. The courses you see there are the bread and butter courses that every teacher needs to have um, uh, accomplished and passed. So as you would expect, uh, courses in classroom management, assessing learning, uh, child development, and the foundations of education, the basic six courses that every teacher knows a lot about and needs to know a lot about. At the end of those courses, uh, you, the student, get yourself hired, and that can be in a public school where uh, probably I'd say 95% of our people teach in, public, in the public arena, maybe 5% uh, teach in 
independent schools and maybe Christian schools, uh, again, in Virginia. And, um, and at that point, once you get hired, we assign you a regent mentor who is your, going to be your full-time supporter uh, throughout the whole of level one. Very important to have that uh, support um, readily available to you. And that person becomes your best friend, your number one cheerleader to make sure you get through that first year of teaching in the best possible way. So at the end of um, level two, you um, receive your full-time, um, your, sorry, your, your full license and um, it's renewable for 10 years, it says on the screen. And then is a really good time to think about um, acquiring the Master of Education degree, because at that point you will have accumulated 24 graduate credit hours in our program. And oh, by the way, uh, Regent's version of the Career Center program is the only one that awards graduate credit. So if you're thinking about going to ODU or one of these other universities, and don't tell anybody, but Dr. Pippen and I were both are both ODU alumni. Um, ODU and the other providers do not give you graduate credit hours. So once you've finished your first year of teaching, uh, tell Regent that you'd like to finish up and get your degree. And two courses later, you can put MED after your name. And that means more money for teaching the same children, the same subject as the people in the next classroom to you. And it also means that if you um, feel like you are ready for promotion in say four or five years time, you want to be a department chair, or you think of going into administration to become an assistant principal, that's the degree that you will need. So <clears throat> my colleague, Dr. Pippen, will now tell you more about how to get that uh, MED degree. Thank you, Dr. Whiting. And thanks to everyone who's joined us this evening. Um, so for career switchers, or anyone, regardless of whether they're in the career switcher program or not, the individualized MED at Regent is 30 total credit hours. And so <clears throat> if, if you are pursuing the career switcher program, uh, you can ignore uh, the five semester note here in the middle of the screen, uh, but for someone who uh, is, is simply enrolling in this master's degree, it is 30 credit hours and typically takes five semesters. Um, many of the courses are included in the Career Switcher program. Uh, there are about half, about half of the 30 credit hours are core curriculum kinds of things. So for example, uh, curriculum and instruction would be a course. Um, foundations of education would be one of the core courses. Um, uh, generally things that are, provide a marvelous foundation and framework. The beauty of this individualized degree is uh, while it doesn't provide in itself a, te a teaching licensure, uh, if you are already licensed or if you don't have an interest in licensure, what it provides is an opportunity for you to specialize and in the electives offered in the program, so for the 15 credits of the 30 credits, uh, you can take um, whatever you have an interest in. So for example, we've had students who would do a couple of courses related to educational administration, and then perhaps a couple of courses related to counseling, because that's their interest area. You could just as easily focus on uh, curriculum and assessment kinds of things. Uh, if you're interested perhaps in working and building a specific curriculums for various grades from K to 12. So there's multiple options and the electives are your choice. So if we could move <clears throat> to the next slide, uh, upon completing the individualized MED, um, it opens careers up for you in, as either an educational consultant, uh, individuals who homeschool their children really benefit from an, this individualized program, because again, typically they don't have um, a foundation as a regular classroom teacher. 
So it's ideal for someone like that. Uh, anyone interested in just being an informed parent, community member, or school board member, it's critical information. Teachers aides, and of course, as I mentioned earlier, teacher or a licensed teacher, if you already have your license. So that in essence is the IDP degree. Now we, we do have a, um, a specialized version of individualized, which focuses on educational therapy. And you see the NILD MED there. NILD is the National Institute for Learning Development. It is uh, um, not part of Regent, but is a national organization that focuses on helping to train educational therapists to work with students who have some type of learning uh, developmental issue or disability. And so they have a, a very unique program that is entirely focused on uh, learning development. So the majority of this 30 credit hour degree, uh, basically um, um, 16, uh, I'm sorry, 18 credit hours is focused on educational therapy. The other four credit hours uh, are the foundation courses that every teacher needs. So again, the, the basics of uh, curriculum and instruction, um, uh, leadership essentials, and some very basic things that every teacher needs as a foundation, regardless of where you might end up in teaching or in educational therapy. But again, 30 credit hour degree, uh, it takes from two to three years to get this degree. The uh, Regent courses are online, as Dr. Whiting so adeptly described to you. Uh, the NILD um, level one, two, and three courses uh, are, are um, conducted in week-long intensives each summer. And so it takes three summers to complete those intensive um, face-to-face sessions. And of course, there's work that goes with that that you can do online, but uh, you do have to meet face-to-face -face with NILD for three summers. So hence the two to three years required. So um, it provides an, an, an enhanced training and educational foundations, again, with that emphasis in educational therapy. And so career-wise, as we go to the next slide, it, it really focuses and helps um, bolster your career as an educational therapist, an educational consultant, or a teacher. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Pittman and Dr. Whiting for explaining those programs to us. Um, I did see a couple of questions come into the Q&A. Uh, the first one is regarding how many courses you can take at a time. Um, so I'm not sure if this individual, if you are planning on studying it looks like they've got a few prereqs they need to take if you're planning on taking those online or on campus. But I will say um, if you're an online student, two courses per session is considered full time. Uh, and if you're on campus, it's going to be uh, more than that. So just to let give you an idea, um, I think this person is probably talking about online courses. Um, and the next question I believe is for Dr. Whiting. Uh, someone asked, can you start applying for jobs during level one, or are you supposed to wait until you complete the first level before applying? Thanks, Caitlin. Yes, th those are both good questions. Um, I think the first questioner is probably uh, preparing or wanting to prepare to become a teacher in an elementary school. And so um, because um, grade teachers in an elementary school teach all four subjects, math and social studies, English and uh, science, they have to demonstrate that they are qualified to teach all four. And so there is a whole raft of um, undergraduate level courses that have to be taken. And, um, and as you said, Caitlin, um, they can be bunched together and taken in a way that you described. And, um, but they do have to be acquired before 
uh, entry into the program, they can't be taken um, having joined, you, you can't join a program and then finish up taking them. They've all, they are all prerequisites and uh, that, with, in that meaning of the word. And the second question um, applies to people, whether they are aiming to teach in an elementary or secondary school, um, can you apply during level one for a job? Absolutely you can. And if you get hired, um, there's a mechanism by which you can um, uh, start teaching and the school division will give you um, a license. You carry on in the career switcher program. And then at the end of level one, you um, give back that license that you were given and we give you the career switcher provisional license, then you move straight into level two. So it's, um, it's kind of a backdoor way of um, starting teaching, if you will, but I fully support that because the whole purpose of the career switcher program is to get qualified people into classrooms so that children don't end up in classes of 40, but they have two classes of 20 with a teacher in, in, in each room. So yes, you can, is the short answer to your question. Wonderful. I did see another question as well regarding that three years of work experience needed um, as another prerequisite for the program. Does substitute teaching count towards that requirement? Yes, ma'am. Um, and in fact, that's one of the one of the better um, job opportunities, if you will, um, before you join the program, because the more um, experience and um, a time you have in a, a real classroom with re real children, whether that real classroom is in person or whether it's a virtual classroom, um, as we have in uh, many school divisions at the moment, um, that's all good um, learning time um, that helps you um, uh, uh, as you move towards your career of transitioning to teaching. Um, and that, an analogy that I like to draw is if you want to be an airline pilot, um, then a good place to spend some of your time is at an airport. Well, similarly, if you want to be a teacher, um, it's a good way to spend your time is to be in school. So the answer is yes, please. Wonderful. I like that analogy as well. Um, we, oh, we did have one other question come in. Um, someone asked, do you need to complete the Praxis exams before you're eligible for level one? Yeah, it's a good question. And um, <clears throat> you have to not only finish the Praxis exam, exam uh, before you're eligible for level one, you have to pass it. And so it's not negotiable. Um, you have to pass the practice to, uh, to get into the program at whatever level you are, um, whether you're planning to join as an elementary teacher or a secondary teacher, you have to have that under your belt. Um, the next question asks, can you start the program if you are stationed overseas? And absolutely you can, because the program is, as I said earlier, totally online. And there's a slight catch though, because in level one, five of the six courses require some work to be done actually in a school. And that school has to be located in Virginia. So the one course that you can take in its entirety is called the Foundations in Education. And you can take that course, whether you are in, um, an aircraft carrier in the Indian Ocean, or whether you are Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany, uh, or wherever you happen to be. And, um, but the others, you have to be able to get to a school in Virginia to conduct your practicum. Um, that's not always going to be terribly difficult. For example, I remember well um, a major in the US Marine Corps who was stationed um, in Camp Pendleton in California, and he found a way of getting to Virginia, probably um, fiddled his uh, uh, duty time, I don't care, he, he did it successfully, and he was in Virginia to do his practicum work every time it was required. So if you can travel to Virginia to do it, that's fine, but otherwise you have to wait until you come home from overseas to 
to do the other five courses. Excellent. Um, I had a question as well, um, and it could be for either Dr. Pittman or Dr. Whiting. Um, I know we've had students in the past ask questions about, um, you know, licensure in other states. Uh, you know, we're, Regent is located in Virginia Beach. Um, I know that we are preparing students to be licensed in the state of Virginia, but can you talk a little bit about how that might translate if students are looking to teach in other states? Yes, it's a good, good point. Um, the the Carissager program is that the title is unique to Virginia. And so it's, it's Virginia's um, uh, pet program, if you will. And in other states, it has alternative licensure has a different title. But in Virginia, the, the drill is that you teach here uh, in level two of our program, which is also your first year of teaching at the end of which, as I said previously, um, you are awarded the uh, full 10-year renewable license. And that license, Caitlin, is reciprocal in um, 49, I think 48 other states. I'm not sure which you one out. It's probably one you wouldn't want to teach in anyway. And so once you have that full 10-year license, you can teach in uh, a neighboring state or California or Nebraska or wherever. Wonderful. Well, that's good to know. I, I know that that's a question that we receive often. So in case anyone else had that question on their minds. Um, another person asks, is there anything being in, <clears throat> interwoven into the curriculum to help teachers prepare for teaching in this new virtual environment due to COVID? That's a, that's a very good question. It's an easy question to ask. It's a very difficult question really to answer. And the, the reason for that is because um, there are umpteen school divisions in Virginia and um, at any one time, half of them are doing one thing, um, one third are doing something else, um, three fifths of them are doing something completely different. And um, on top of all that, it changes from week to week and uh, for, for very obvious and understandable reasons. So consequently, um, uh, what is happening in uh, Fairfax County tomorrow is totally different to what is happening in Chesapeake Public Schools on, when, on, on Friday and uh, what is happening in um, Loudoun County next Tuesday. So um, how have we adapted to meet all those requirements? The answer is probably not well enough, but are we aware of the situation? Absolutely we are. And are my instructors doing their best to help prepare people to cope with that ever-changing scenario? Yes, they are. And we hope we can um, do even better as we move forward. But it is difficult um, for all those reasons that I've explained. And I'm, I'm sure you'll understand that challenge that um, uh, is being faced. And, and um, the, um, the people who are doing their first year of teaching in the academic year 2020-21 um, have really got their work cut out because everything is changing at the drop of a hat and they have to keep up with it. So we support them and we help this as much as we can and we will continue to do so. Absolutely. It's, this environment is definitely presenting unique challenges um, but it, it will prepare you well as a teacher to be flexible, which seems to be the name of the game oftentimes. Um, we had another question come in. Someone asked for the elementary education to master's in education, uh, what is the shortest amount of time that it might take to complete the program? Yeah, Dr. Pittman, would you like to take that one? Uh, Dr. Whiting, that's actually a question for Cheryl Gould in our uh, undergraduate college, I believe, isn't it? Yes. Thank um, you, Dr. Goldman. Yeah, so we actually don't have, um, we don't have a master's of education anymore. We have phased out of that program. We are strictly going to Dr. Whiting's program with the career switcher with an emphasis in elementary education. Okay, wonderful. And we can email you as well and send you more information. 
Um, all right, I think that that is it. Oh, we just had one other question come in. Someone asking about uh, level one of the program. Are they able to select which school or school county in which they can complete those hours or are they going to be assigned a school? Yeah, it's a good question. And um, the, the protocol is that if you live in um, Fredericksburg, for example, and um, you, you're in the program and you're accepted into the program and you want to conduct your practicum in um, the, uh, the John F. Kennedy High School in Fredericksburg, um, if there is such a thing, and if it hasn't been renamed recently, then you um, let us know. And we will apply to that school division uh, for placement for you. And, um, and the school division will say, absolutely, you can start uh, next Monday with uh, Mrs. Smith, who will become your cooperating teacher. So we do try to um, um, acquire for you the school of your choice. But we have to um, arrange it for you. You can't go to your best friend who happens to teach you in that high school and say, is it okay if I come and work with you? It has, the, the cooperating teacher has to be appointed by the uh, school division. Wonderful, okay, great. Well, um, we wanna be respectful of everyone's time this evening. So we are going to go ahead and end the live portion of this webinar. However, we're gonna keep the webinar open. So if you have more questions, please keep them coming in the Q&A. We have a team behind the scenes here that's going to work on answering all of those for you. Um, but in the meantime, I would just like to thank all of the attendees who are here this evening and our Dr. Pittman and Dr. Whiting. Thank you so much for presenting this material um, and taking time out of your night to uh, spend time with us. We really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to throw up this slide that has all of our contact information. Um, so if you have other questions that you don't want to submit in the Q&A, feel free to give us a call or email us and we would be happy to work with you as well. Um, and with that, I will wish you all a very good evening. Thank you so much. Thanks much. Have a great evening. Thank you.